Hi, everybody. So today we, we participate in the defense of Talgat Dolbaev. The topic of the dissertation is applications of differentiable equations and the reduced order modeling for deep learning. Uh, supervisor of Talgat is Professor Ivana Siledic. Co-supervisor of Talgat is Professor Andrei Chikhovsky. Uh, doctoral program is Computational and Data Science and Engineering. Uh, now, I'd like to briefly introduce the members of, ju of jury. Uh, so, uh, just a quick uh, comments about myself. So, I am full professor, director of Skaltech Applied AI Center. Uh, I am specialized uh, in uh, various applications of machine learning for industrial processes and modeling of multidimensional data based on generative models and um, uh, manifold learning. Um, uh, our invited uh, jury member, uh, Professor Yuping Liu, uh, he is from University of Electronic Science and Technology of China. He received a bachelor degree in biomedical engineering and a PhD degree in information and communication engineering from the University of Electronic Science and Technology of China uh, in 2006 and 2011, respectively. Uh, he worked as a research engineer in Huawei Technologies China and also uh, as a postdoc uh, at University of Leuven, Belgium. Uh, since uh, 2014, he has been an associate uh, professor with uh, USTC Chengdu, China. His research interests include uh, compressive sensing, tensor signal processing, and deep networks. He has authored, uh, co authored over 100 papers, and he has served on technical program committees for many very prestigious conferences. Uh, he is a, a IEEE senior member, a member of the Multimedia Technology Technical Committee of Chinese Computer Federation, and a member of the China Society of Image and Graphics on Youth Working Committee. Uh, uh, the another invited uh, uh, jury member is Professor Rafael Ballester Ripoll uh, from uh, uh, University in Spain, uh, IE. Uh, he is assistant professor. Uh, he holds a PhD in computer science from the University of Zurich, Switzerland, as well as a bachelor and ma master degrees in mathematics and computer science from Technical University of Catalonia, Spain. His research interests include data analysis, explainable artificial intelligence, sensitivity analysis, where he used modeling tools such as low rank decomposition, tensor networks, and neural networks. He has made significant contributions to large-scale and significant visualization, data compression, and uncertainty quantification. And uh, these, the results of this research uh, have been published in many prestigious journals, including GMLR, Reliability Engineering, System Safety, and other very respectful journal, uh, journals. Uh, uh, he uh, worked as an postdoctoral associate at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich and the University of Zurich as well. Uh, Another member of uh, jury is uh, uh, our colleague, Professor Ran Hufan from Skoltech. He's, head of, uh, he's a full professor and head of laboratory of intelligent signal and image processing. He received his PhD degree from uh, Kyoshi Institute of Technology, Japan in uh, 2011. Uh, he was a research scientist with the laboratory of advanced brain signal processing brain science institute in Riken, Japan. Uh, his research interests include multilinear algebra, tensor computation, tensor networks, nonlinear systems, blind source separation, brain computer interface, and deep learning. He is an associate editor of IEEE uh, Transactions on uh, Cybernetics and has received multiple awards for his research, including the best paper award for articles in IEEE SPM in uh, 2018 uh, and the ICONIP in uh, 2016 and the Outstanding Reviewer Award for maintaining the pre prestige of ICA as SSP in uh, 2019. And uh, the jury member uh, from Higher School of Economics is Professor Maxim Rahuba. Uh, he received his bachelor and master degree from uh, MIPT. He defended his uh, PhD dissertation on tensor method for solving high dimensional partial eigenvalue problems uh, in uh, 2017. He worked as a postdoc in uh, Etihad Zurich 
Uh, currently, he's an associate professor uh, at the Computer Science Department of uh, Higher School of Economics University. He has brought expertise in uh, numerical algebra, but also in applications of these methods for various uh, problems in machine learning and published many papers at uh, such prestigious venues as ICML, NeurIPS, ICCV, and others. Supervisor is Professor Ivan Nasilezis. He is a full professor, director of uh, Center for Artificial Energy and Technology. Uh, he received uh, his uh, master and bachelor degree from uh, uh, Moscow Institute of Physics and Technology and uh, candidate and doctor of science degrees from Marshuk Institute of Numerical Mathematics of Russian Academy of Sciences. He joined Skaltech uh, in 2013 and uh, his research covers a broad range of topics uh, devoted to uh, applications of numerical linear algebra and uh, applications of numerical uh, linear algebra for machine learning. He proposed the tensor training composition, which is very popular nowadays, and this results more uh, in more than 200 papers, including uh, top A star venues uh, such as ICLR, uh, ICLE, uh, IC Mail, NeurIPS, and others. Uh, he's an associate editor of uh, SIAM Journal on Mathematics of Data Science, Journal on Scientific Computing and Advances in Computational Mathematics. He was honored with many awards, uh, including Russian President Award for Young Researchers, Ilya Sidolovich Award, Base PhD Supervisor Award, Humboldt Prize Award, uh, and other awards. Uh, a co-supervisor is a very well-known uh, Professor Andrzej Chichotsky. He's a full professor, head of uh, the Laboratory of Tensor Networks and Deep Learning for Data Mining. Uh, he uh, obtained uh, his PhD uh, from Warsaw Institute of Technology. Uh, he contributed to various areas of uh, signal processing, including blind signal and uh, image processing, matrix factorizations, neural networks. See, he's a holder of nu numerous patents and software developments and uh, has been selected for his uh, exceptional influence and performance on the list of highly cited researchers by Web of Science. And just uh, several words about our uh, PhD candidate, Talgat Dulbaev. He received a bachelor and master degrees in computer science from Lomonosov Moscow State University in 2016 and 2018, respectively. His bachelor major was machine learning and his master major was numerical methods. His research interests include deep learning, deep networks, neural order, uh, order and differential equations, numerical methods, and generative models. He has experience in various applications of the methods for computer vision, uh, and uh, in particular in phase and spoofing problems. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, now we should uh, listen to candidates' presentations. So, Talgat, you have uh, 40 minutes, more or less. And then we, we, we will proceed with questions. So, okay. please. So, uh, hello, everyone. And thank you for coming. Uh, yeah, my name is Talgat, uh, and you know the topic of my dissertation. Uh, my dissertation uh, is based on uh, five uh, papers and preprints uh, that are here, uh, and also I have a paper that uh, is not included in the thesis, but uh, the topic is uh, quite uh, connected to the topic of dissertation. But uh, yes, so let's start from our motivation. Uh, when we started uh, this research, uh, we knew that there is a deep uh, connection between neural network architectures uh, like FreezeNet and SNET and others uh, with the discretizations of uh, uh, numerical solvers for uh, differential equations. Uh, and uh, since uh, this connection exists, uh, there is a potential ability to apply uh, common uh, differential equation uh, machinery for uh, neural networks. That, that was one motivation, and the second one uh, was uh, the paper that was published when I was uh, on the first year of uh, the grad uh, school. Uh, it's called Neural ODEs, and uh, this, this is a neural network architecture that is exactly uh, a system of continuous uh, ordinary differential equations. And uh, this uh, architecture uh, is, uh, was and is very promising, but uh, in this field uh, there are still um, many issues and uh, uh, dif different uh, unsolved problems. Uh, and so uh, the status uh, consists of uh, two parts. Uh, the first 
part is devoted to uh, neural ODEs and uh, the aim was to improve training algorithms and architecture uh, of these uh, models. And uh, the second part uh, is devoted to the implementation of uh, common, uh, co common techniques for uh, differential equations for model order reduction uh, for deep learning. And uh, I will start from uh, the main uh, chapter uh, of this uh, dissertation. It is called Interpolation Technique to Speed Up Gradients Propagation in Neural Audience. Uh, so, uh, as you, you can understand, we uh, study uh, neural ordinary differential equations, uh, and uh, it is uh, uh, architecture of neural networks uh, that contains the following building block that is called the ODE block. Uh, it is just uh, a system of uh, ordinary differential equations uh, that is parameterized by a uh, set of uh, parameters theta, theta uh, and these parameters are, are uh, included into the right hand side of uh, this equation. It's the system of equations uh, and uh, the input features are treated as the initial conditions of the system and the output of the system is uh, the solution of the system at the final time, T1. Uh, and uh, like in various other machine learning problems, we uh, have to uh, feed the model uh, using the data by minimizing uh, the loss function with respect to its parameters. Uh, and uh, the question is how to compute gradients in neural ODEs? Well, there is a simple uh, answer for this question. We can use uh, the common auto differentiation technique. Uh, I mean that uh, we can simply apply a uh, uh, numerical uh, integrator uh, and uh, store everything in memory uh, and then uh, backpropagate through these points using the standard backpropagation from uh, neural networks. Uh, and uh, this approach is very fast, but um, unfortunately uh, there are uh, some cases with memory, uh, with, uh, with high, high memory, con memory consumption and uh, uh, for some cases this uh, approach, the standard backpropagation is not applicable. Uh, there, are, uh, there were uh, two other approaches. Uh, one, one of them is ANODE uh, that uh, is just a checkpointing approach when we uh, divide uh, the segment into several um, uh, parts, and then uh, we have to uh, to Im implement the checkpointing idea and solve uh, uh, solve the system on each uh, segment um, many times. Uh, and uh, the advantage of this approach is that uh, we, it fits in memory. If we uh, divide uh, the segment smart smartly, but uh, unfortunately we'll have to do many uh, unnecessary computations, additional computations, and uh, it, it is uh, rather hard to implement. And uh, the, another option is the joint method or uh, the reverse dynamics method, uh, as we call it in our uh, paper. Uh, it was proposed by the authors of uh, Neural Ordinary Differential Equations uh, paper. And uh, it doesn't uh, require uh, additional memory, uh, but unfortunately, uh, in order to uh, perform back propagation, we uh, have to solve additional systems of differential equations, and moreover, we should uh, solve solve them backwards in time. So this the, the system is on the slide. It consists of uh, three subsystems. Uh, the main subsystem is uh, on the left, but uh, you can see that in order to uh, solve the system, we have to know uh, the values of uh, two variables. Uh, the first variable is A of T, uh, that is called the joint variable, and uh, the second variable is Z of T, because we, uh, we don't know it, uh, because we just saved uh, the only uh, value of uh, Z. Uh, 
And that's what, uh, that is why we we'll have to uh, solve uh, two additional uh, systems, uh, the joint system on the right and uh, the, like the initial system backwards in time. Uh, and altogether, this uh, composition of three subsystems is integrated from T1 to T0. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, there are some cases where this approach is unstable. And the example of this instability is shown uh, on the slide. It is just a, a, a sample from a MNIST data set uh, and a standard uh, residual network block that was uh, initialized with random variables, random uh, normal variables. And uh, if to perform a forward uh, pass from Z, Z0 to Z1 and then uh, solve uh, the, the subsystem that is boxed in the, in the, in the middle uh, backward in time, we uh, obtain uh, some kind of noise and not, not uh, the uh, image that was, uh, uh, that was uh, applied for the forward, forward pass. And uh, so this is uh, a serious uh, problem uh, of course, uh, it is it, it is not a uh, very uh, very often problem, but uh, there are cases, and, and it, it, this case is on slide uh, when we uh, encounter uh, this uh, instability. And so, in order to mitigate this uh, instability, uh, we introduced uh, the uh, interpolated reverse dynamics method, uh, and its its key idea. Uh, was uh, just not uh, get rid of uh, the subsystem that can be uh, unstable and interpolate uh, the values of activations Z of T uh, uh, during the backward pass. So we have to select uh, several points and apply uh, interpolation. So we uh, we use the Britcentric Lagrange interpolation. It is very simple. It, it's very practical, uh, and uh, uh, everything can be pre-computed pre uh, during uh, during the for well before the training. And uh, everything we, we have to uh, we have to know is just uh, Z uh, at the grid, grid nodes and the grid here is uh, the Chebyshev grid. So uh, instead of solving uh, the system that consists of three subsystems, we solve system that is, uh, uh, that, that uh, consists of two subsystems. And as a result, uh, the dimensionality of the system is lower. And that's why it's, uh, it's faster to solve. And uh, we get rid of the unstable um, subsystem. That's the key idea of our approach. Um, and we also have uh, some approximation error analysis. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it, it, is, it is not very practical because we can't compute uh, this uh, functions on the whole segment from T0 to T1, but uh, there are some terms that uh, affect uh, the uh, uh, error of uh, our approach. Uh, Jacobians and, and uh, logarithmic norm of uh, the Jacobian and also this, its smoothness. And uh, show you, I will show you results. Um, these results are for density estimation. You can see uh, on the left that, um, the standard uh, a joint method, R RDM, uh, has a high peak and uh, uh, we assu assume that uh, there can be some uh, instability and uh, 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 the uh, algorithm is in the wrong local minima. Uh, that, 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 that is why there is a high peak uh, on, the tr on the test loss. And uh, you can see that uh, our approach requires is is a bit is a bit faster, 
and requires uh, less uh, number of uh, right-hand side evaluations. And uh, in our case, case uh, the computational complexity of uh, the right-hand side uh, is, is not so high, but uh, uh, the gain in, uh, in, in efficiency uh, will be higher for uh, m more complex right-hand sites. Okay. And uh, you can see also that uh, there is a, a number n, uh, n equals 4, uh, 8, uh, 16, and so on. Uh, it's the number of uh, grid points. And in, in our experiments, uh, n equals uh, 8 or 16 is uh, always a good decision. Uh, empirically, uh, it's uh, important to mention. Uh, also, we have uh, results for uh, density estimation for toy data sets. We can see that uh, uh, training iterations are faster for, uh, the, um, for our method. 4, 8, 6, 16, and so on are number of grid points. And uh, we also applied uh, our uh, method for uh, classification problem. And uh, for neural ODEs, uh, the data sets are not so uh, co complex. And even training CIFAR-10 was a problem. Uh, and, and you can uh, see that uh, t test accuracy uh, of our approach, uh, well, uh, it is the same, but uh, the training time uh, is a bit faster, is a bit better. And so uh, to sum up, we introduced a method uh, to train neural ODEs that is a bit but faster than traditional adjoint method, uh, is memory efficient. Also, it allows adaptive integration. Uh, it means that uh, we uh, do not uh, restrict the number of uh, steps uh, during the integration and, the, and we don't uh, restrict the step size and uh, it uh, outperforms uh, the joint methods on our benchmarks. And, uh, and also you can see uh, contributions, uh, my contributions. So uh, let's proceed. Uh, the, the second chapter, uh, well, the third chapter in the dissertation is about uh, normalization in neural audience. Well, um, this uh, is, is uh, the, the simplest uh, chapter in the dissertation, probably. Uh, but uh, uh, let's proceed anyway. Uh, so we, the motivation was as follows, uh, that uh, normalizations are widely used in uh, almost all deep learning architectures and uh, normalizations uh, allow to improve quality and accelerate training and uh, mitigate many issues. And, uh, but in discrete uh, deep learning model, uh, each normalization layer corresponds to a single step of neural ODEs, while normalizations in neural ODEs should work for any time t. And there was no uh, comparison between different types of normalizations for neural ODEs. And we decided to do it and, uh, uh, and uh, pu publish these results on workshop. Um, so, uh, the, well, probably the, the only idea here uh, is that uh, in the case of um, continuous neural ODS models, we have additional um, degree of freedom because uh, during the uh, evaluation procedure, we can change uh, the uh, numerical integrator. And the intuition uh, tells us that if we uh, switch uh, the uh, numerical integrator for better, for a better numerical integrator, or uh, we increase the number of uh, function evaluations, or, or decrease the step size, and so on, uh, the, the result uh, the accuracy of the result should not be lower than uh, the uh, accuracy of uh, the of the model with the initial training solver. 
and uh, in other case the model is is not uh, is, is not good enough and it overfits uh, to the parameters of uh, solver and that's why we decided uh, to, uh, to to train uh, neural ODEs uh, for uh, with uh, one solver and and then uh, check uh, the uh, test accuracy uh, for uh, with other solvers with higher uh, number of uh, the right hand side evaluations and smaller step size and you can see that uh, in some for some normalizations uh, the qu the quality uh, the, the quality uh, degrades and um, degrades and uh, uh, for some uh, normalizations, uh, the quality, the accuracy is not so high. But uh, on this plot, you can see that uh, the, the combination of uh, batch normalization for uh, the first uh, not neural or these layers, like uh, uh, embedding layers and layer normalizations for uh, ordinary uh, differential equations layer uh, is good enough. And we uh, suggest using it. And uh, interestingly, that uh, this this uh, combination of normalizations uh, is used in uh, transformer models, for example, uh, layer norm with the batch normalizations for embeddings. Uh, so uh, these are some summary that summaries and uh, contributions. And then we proceed to uh, the th third uh, chapter about neural ODEs. Uh, the motivation was as follows, that uh, we use uh, Ranke kata methods uh, of stage S and order B, uh, and, but, but uh, typically uh, in this community people use uh, a single solver uh, during the whole training process. But uh, we, uh, uh, well, well, we asked the question, the question was, can we benefit from using different solvers for parameterization during, during training? And uh, we proposed several strategies for training. Uh, two of them are uh, free because uh, we don't have to do extra computations. Uh, and w one of them is not free. So free, free uh, strategies are switching when we choose a solver randomly from a finite predefined set of solver, solvers. And uh, the, the, the second option is smoothing when we add some uh, random noise. In our case, it, it was a standard uh, normal distribution uh, to the parameters of uh, uh, the solver. Uh, I mean that uh, we have a perimeter, parameterization uh, of the Runge Kata methods like with one or two numbers, and we add some noise uh, during training, and this noise changes from batch to batch. And the last uh, option was assembling when we averaged uh, the results of uh, predefined solvers. And uh, we uh, f found out that uh, the accuracy of uh, the models uh, was the same for, for all mo models, but uh, these approaches uh, allowed us to uh, improve the robustness for uh, respect to uh, adversarial attacks. And we have uh, several plots. Uh, I'm not going to show to show everything, but this uh, table is for black box attacks on CFR10, and you can see uh, that uh, the standalone uh, stand, it is a standard uh, one solver for the whole training process. Uh, the standalone results are, are uh, lower than uh, the results for other approaches, and it, it is also true for. For uh, gray box attacks, we call uh, gray box attacks, uh, uh, well, white box attacks, when we know everything except uh, the training uh, solver. 
pay. And so uh, we uh, proposed a, a procedure that allowed uh, to increase robustness for free. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, this increase was uh, n uh, not, not, not so significant, but it was systematic. That's why I, I see no, uh, uh, well, uh, um, well uh, th that's, that's why probably this ap approach uh, sh should be used uh, for any cases. And, and, and then we uh, move forward for the last two chapters. Uh, these chapters are about uh, application of reduced uh, order methods for uh, deep learning. And uh, the, the, this chapter was uh, well, prepared in 2019. That's why it, it is slightly outdated, but uh, uh, the idea can be potentially applied for, uh, uh, for other methods, for other architectures and uh, in different domains. So our idea was as follows. In uh, many low rank, uh, low rank compression methods, uh, it is, uh, well, there, there is an assumption that the uh, tensors of weights are low rank, but our assumption was that uh, the outputs of some layers can be mapped to, uh, to a low dimensional space. And you can see that for, uh, for two uh, popular uh, architectures, VGG and ResNet, uh, um, the singular values uh, decrease uh, very, uh, with, with a high speed for, for some layers. And uh, th that is why, uh, we assume that uh, this uh, low rank assumption is true for some cases. And uh, then we uh, pref uh, proposed uh, the following approach. I will show you uh, the idea uh, for uh, the simplest multi-layer perceptron and then uh, explain how to use it for other methods. So just imagine that we have uh, a multi-layer perceptron. It, it is uh, consists of it consists of uh, matrix vector products and nonlinearities. And typical nonlinearities are element-wise functions. Uh, and uh, if the low rank assumption is uh, true for the first layer, then we uh, then we have the boxed uh, equation here. Um, and uh, this is. Um, it can be viewed as a linear system, uh, high and uh, skinny linear system. And uh, in order to solve this system, we can uh, apply some sketching algorithm uh, to select some rows. And uh, we used the maximum volume algorithm and uh, we computed uh, the, uh, ma the maximum volume submatrix and uh, applied, uh, well, took only uh, maximum volume rows. And uh, we, uh, and if to apply the, this uh, procedure for all layers, we can uh, get the following uh, embeddings, C to CK uh, are low dimensional embeddings. And uh, also, we can uh, merge some uh, matrices together uh, on the um, on the training during the training pro like compression uh, pr procedure uh, and obtain the uh, multi-layer perceptron, but with uh, uh, lower but of lower dimensionality, and uh, you, can, you can see a schematic. Uh, illustration of our approach. On the top, there is an initial multi-layer perceptron, and on uh, the uh, bottom, it is a re resulting uh, neural network that has uh, one more layer, but these layers are of a smaller dimension. And uh, since convolution is linear transformation also, we can treat it as a matrix by vector product and convert convolutions to fully connected layers. And of course, uh, it, it, uh, 
the uh, size of uh, this matrix uh, can be higher, but uh, we, uh, in, in this chapter, we think of speed, but not of uh, the number of parameters. Batch normalization uh, that is popular uh, in deep, deep networks is also um, linear operation during the inference. And uh, since uh, there is no nonlinearity between uh, linear layers and batch normalization, uh, we can um, stack uh, batch normalization and linear uh, models together. And maximum pooling can be also uh, added to, uh, into our approach. Uh, also, there is a possibility to use the low rank assumption for the residual networks, but unfortunately we didn't, we didn't have uh, results for residual networks and uh, in, the, in, the, in that chapter the results are only for uh, feed forward uh, networks. And uh, you can see some results. Uh, RON are our results, is, is our model. Uh, 10x means that uh, we uh, reduced the dimensionality of uh, the last layers by 10 or, or by uh, 20 here. And uh, these are results. The, uh, in some cases, we can. Uh, uh, outperform the initial model after fine tune, but with not so high uh, speed up and flop and flop reduction. Uh, but uh, the advantage of our approach is that uh, it, it turned out that it can be potentially uh, combined with uh, other uh, methods for uh, acceleration and. Uh, expression of uh, neural networks. One of them is uh, the DCP uh, from, from uh, the, the, that paper. And uh, there, is a, an, uh, there is a plot that we can uh, get a high flop reduction uh, by combining D DCP and our approach and uh, add fine tuning. Uh, also, uh, Fine tuning helps us to uh, to reduce the error that is accumulated uh, after uh, after application of uh, several approximations. And uh, these are these are results here. And also, uh, we can compare uh, our uh, uh, our approach to existing methods on CIFAR ten and we get some gain. But uh, the disadvantage here is that uh, well, this approach works well for small data sets. And uh, unfortunately, we, we, we couldn't manage uh, to apply it for ImageNet and uh, higher data uh, and, and more complex data sets. And so uh, as, uh, as a summary, this method can be applied on top of other exploration methods and uh, process several popular network architectures uh, the resulting network is simple, um, but uh, this method is not, for, uh, is not for compression, it is for acceleration, and it works well for small data sets, and, uh, but uh, there is potential, potential ability to find uh, the domain uh, outside of images for, uh, and, and, and apply this method there, but uh, we, we couldn't do it. So this, this also are, this are also contributions. And the last uh, chapter uh, is uh, the active subspaces of neural networks. Uh, the idea is simple. We can uh, use uh, the following active subspace method. That is uh, uh, order reduction technique also. And uh, this, uh, uh, so we can uh, take uh, the cl classifier and uh, comp computed gradients and and for many deep learning, well, in deep learning it's possible. And uh, then uh, some, uh, the last, uh, so the data is projected into the low dimensional active subspace and then some simple uh, model is uh, applied. Uh, the simple model can be the PC 
or uh, the or the uh, logistic regression and so on. And uh, th this method also uh, was applied for simple uh, models uh, on uh, CIFAR 10 data sets. And uh, we get some acceleration. And also there, there is a second uh, part in this uh, chapter. It's about universal adversarial attacks. Uh, you, using uh, the active subspace approach, we can uh, develop a, a method to uh, craft uh, universal adversarial attacks using uh, simple uh, iterative approaches. Approach uh, it's alternating procedure uh, that consists of finding the first active, active subspace vector and projecting the vector on the sphere okay. so uh, and this approach uh, works better than the classic uh, uh, universal adversarial attacks and is is faster to compute but we uh, didn't uh, compare it to uh, other uh, universal adversarial attacks methods so this is the summary uh, we have uh, two uh, contributions. The first one is uh, application of the active subspaces for uh, for compression, and the second one is for uh, universal adversarial attacks. And uh, my uh, contribution is uh, just the implementation of the algorithms. And so, uh, to sum up, we have uh, five chapters in the dis dissertations. I have uh, in the dissertation. Uh, the first one is about uh, alter uh, alternative, alternative uh, training algorithm for neural ODEs. Uh, the second one is about experimental evaluation of different normalization techniques. Uh, the third one is about uh, computationally inexpensive method for uh, improving the robustness of neural ODEs. And the last two chapters are about uh, uh, model, model order reduction and uh, application of active subspaces for uh, universal adversarial attacks. So probably that's all. Thank you for attention. So, uh... so um, I, w I was reading the, uh, the, the, the dissertation, uh, the, the last section. Uh, so, uh, now we have uh, a part of the defense devoted to questions from the jury members. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask each jury member to confirm whether he is satisfied or not with the changes introduced to the thesis after the review. Um, so, I guess we can start from one of our invited colleagues. Uh, Professor uh, Wing Pen Lee, uh, could you please start with the questions? Professor, do you hear us? Professor Wing Pen Lee? Is he online? Professor Liu, can you hear us? Yes, I can. <laughs> okay, so uh, I, I propose to, uh, to, to start from uh, external invited uh, jury members. So could you please ask your questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have any? Okay. Yes. Uh, can I uh, give my question now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, please. Do it. Ah. Okay. So it, it looks that the, uh, compared with the, the previous, previous uh, version I, 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 I review, um, this version it's, uh, it uh, improves a lot. Uh, so, uh, but I still have uh, maybe uh, some questions. Like uh, the first one is that, um, 
I'm, uh, I cannot see it's quite uh, clear the, 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 the connections between the first part on new, neural ODE and the, the second, uh, maybe another part on active subspace analyzer. So is there some, some, some connections to make it the, the thesis uh, contain two uh, these parts as a, as a whole? That means uh, maybe there, is, is there a more better framework for, for it? So this is my, my first question. So if I understand you correctly, uh... The question is about the connection between uh, the second part and the first part, uh, and uh, the, uh, so the connection with active subspaces is as follows: uh, that uh, initially uh, these uh, methods were uh, applied for uh, systems of differential equations, and uh, in the in the first part, it's, it's also. Uh, the first part also contains uh, systems of differential equations, and uh, so the, con the connection is as follows. So uh, that's pr that's probably my answer. So uh, the uh, the domain of uh, uh, model reduction techniques uh, was uh, in ordinary differential equations and partial differential equations. That's, that's why everything is connected with differential equations and uh, with deep learning. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm. so, okay. Uh, um, the second one is that, uh, is it possible to, to analyze active subspace of all layers, like, uh, and get more compressed uh, uh, model. Do you have uh, some additional e experimental results? Uh, we, we just uh, uh, it's 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 not possible for our approach to combine uh, active combine active subspaces of several uh, layers. We just uh, have some pre model and post model and. Uh, Compute the active subspaces of pre-model and uh, approximate uh, the post-model, but uh, unfortunately we can't uh, combine active subspaces of uh, uh, several layers in in this approach. So pro probably that's the answer. Mm, okay. So okay. So that's all my questions. Thank you. Thanks, okay, uh, could you please also comment whether you are satisfied or not with the changes introduced to the thesis after the review? Ah, uh, yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Okay, that's good. Thank you very much for the for this discussion. Uh, the next, uh, I would like to ask uh, Professor Rafael Balester Ripple. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm not... Uh, 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 saying your surname correctly. Uh, so any questions from your side and also whether you are satisfied or not with the changes? Okay, uh, hi, thank you for the presentation. Um, I, I am happy with most of the answers that were given to my report, but, but I still have a few questions. Uh, for example, with uh, regarding chapter four, so maybe I'll start with that. Um, you, you mentioned that basically, uh, regardless of the choice of the solver, you were achieving a pretty much constant accuracy, not robust accu accuracy, but uh, like standard accuracy. And um, I was wondering, um, do you go to the limit of like, do you go to the limit of, uh, for example, the step size? Do you choose a step size that is as small as needed to ensure that you reach the maximal accuracy? Because you didn't in, the, in chapter four, you did not discuss uh, what happens, for example, when you when you when you change the step size, right? Only the, the choice of different solvers. But did, did you did you check that this is the case that you are reaching uh, indeed uh, convergence? Because we we just see that there's one plot. I think you showed it also in the slides where you see that uh, okay, there's this green line on top that is pretty much constant. But have you looked at the numbers and can you can you confirm that? This is the case. 
like you cannot do any better even with the best solver the most expensive the most expensive one with the smallest step size the, the accuracy does not improve anymore um, okay uh, we didn't uh, change uh, the uh, num the step size because we wanted uh, to uh, have uh, computationally equal models uh, I mean I mean that uh, we compare models that uh, uh, that has the same complexity and we comp uh, and we uh, compare the uh, accuracy under the adversarial perturbations but uh, no unfortunately we uh, didn't uh, perform uh, experiments on uh, for very small step sizes and adversarial attacks for them uh, and and the reason was because we wanted to compare equal computationally equal models that's that's the answer okay um, fair enough that makes sense um, you also said something in the slides that I didn't understand. You said that you managed to improve robust accuracy insignificantly. Can you elaborate? What do you mean by insignificantly? Well, yes, uh, this uh, formulation is, is, is not good. But uh, I mean that uh, the uh, difference in the uh, accuracy under uh, adversarial attacks uh, is higher, but uh, the difference it, well, the difference is not so high, but it is systematic. Well, but by insignificantly, I mean that the difference is not so is, is not so high. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and maybe um, a related question would be. So I'm I'm thinking of okay, you're doing adversarial attacks where the attacker it's it's not white box in any case, so there's always some information hidden to the attacker, and. I think since the choice of solver is so such an integral part, right, to the to the to the neural network, because it's used both it's used for training but also for inference. Like, is it realistic that an attacker knows the weights but doesn't know the um, the solver parameters uh, in the in the gray box example? Yeah, in, in the black box sit setting, we used uh, some other no non-neural ODS uh, model uh, to uh, craft uh, adversarial attacks. And that's why uh, it's, it is fair, because the, uh, someone who creates attacks, uh, someone who creates attacks, uh, sorry. Okay, and uh, uh, someone who creates a DEX uh, knows only his model and, and the data set, and he uh, or she d doesn't know the uh, weights of our neural net, neural audience model. And uh, gray, gray box DEX uh, is just an example uh, that uh, this approach also works for uh, uh, cases when uh, the attacker knows uh, the weights. So that, that's mm -hmm. the answer. Okay, I, I just think, okay, uh, I, did, I didn't see uh, a lot of insights or intuition on why changing the solver affects the robust accuracy. Like you just show that it happens, but you didn't really discuss why. I was thinking maybe a possibility, at least for the gray box example, is that you're shifting some of the complexity of the model to the choice of the solver. And by not allowing the attacker to see that complexity, of course, you're making his or her attacks uh, worse. And I think that's why, for example, the, the switching strategy, which is more complicated, it's, it's more complex, that's making the robust accuracy uh, better, right? So it's, it's making things harder for the attacker because more of the complexity of the model is shifted to the, to the, to the solver complexity. I think that's, that's maybe an interesting intuition. So that's, that's more of a comment than a question. Um, I, I'd like to move on to another chapter now. Uh, okay, yeah, in chapter six, um, yes. what are your thoughts on comparing the compression performance with other methods? I saw that you compared, uh, for example, the adver adversarial robustness to UAP, the universal adversarial propagation, perturbation, sorry. Uh, 
But regarding the compression, which is also a very interesting benefit of the method, I mean, the numbers are quite good, but you didn't compare to any other alternative, like you did in chapter five. So in chapter six, there's no comparison. What do you think, how, how would your method, method compare to, to alternative compression methods? Uh, well, uh, I'm a, a bit pessimistic about the results, uh, but, uh, and 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 uh, the uh, well comp there is there is no comp comparison with the other methods unfortunately so uh well i, I that that's why i can't understand uh, i can't answer uh this this question uh because uh, th there is no comparison with other methods for this approaches this approach well, thanks for the honesty. I guess that uh, answers my question. And maybe yes. the last question, the last question for now, is on a on a plot that you showed regarding uh, in chapter two. Uh, you showed this example with the MNIST digit. I think it was the digit five. And when using RDM to integrate backward in time, there was this noisy result. So it was argued that this was an instability of RDM. And my question is very specific and both yes and no or I, I will be happy with either answer it's just out of curiosity but you try your proposed method irdm do you try it with this specific mnist example uh, and does it lead to the same st instability or does it lead to a better result uh, i i don't i don't think that uh, i uh, got done uh, the question right but uh, it, it, it was just uh, an example of instability and instability leads to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, worse convergence and uh, it leads to um, pr problems with accuracy and so on. So it, it was just, just an example uh, that uh, the standard joint method uh, is, is not good in all cases. And uh, in, in some cases, uh, uh, it, it doesn't converge to, uh, and, and there is a noisy output. That's, that's why we should somehow fix it. And uh, we also uh, had uh, several uh, additional um, advantages. So we fixed uh, the uh, stability issue and also reduced the uh, we also reduced uh, the dimensionality of the system and also introduced some uh, regularization on the smoothness of uh, the activations. It's, o it's also uh, some uh, advantage of our approach. So we wanted to uh, mitigate the instability, but also uh, solved uh, several other issues. Yeah, I, I am happy with the chapter and with the motivation and everything. I'm just curious if uh, you applied your, your, your proposed method to that specific example of the digit number five and uh, check what happens or did you not try? Uh, no, no, we, 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 did, we didn't try. We just uh, checked that uh, these situations uh, are possible and uh, did not uh, uh, didn't uh, try to find uh, uh, other examples because if, if even for this simple MNIST uh, sample uh, the, um, it, it holds true, then uh, then this situation can be possible for uh, more complex examples and for, for more complex models. Okay, makes sense. I mean, the paper Thanks. was published in a very good venue, so I, I have no doubt that it works. Yeah, I was just curious about that specific example. And that's, uh, that's it for my questions for now. So I give the floor to the next person. Okay, thank you very much. So now we conclude with co co comments and questions from uh, internal uh, jury members. Um, I would like to, to uh, ask uh, several questions, comments myself. First of all, uh, a formal thing. Uh, so, yeah, the, 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 the thesis uh, was uh, additionally polished uh, following the comments uh, in, the, in my review. However, still I found in the thesis uh, some mention of uh, some uh, miraculous 
supplementary materials section. Долго откуда и прискомбин, probably, somehow. Oh, uh, it, it is my mistake, probably. Because, yeah, uh, it seems that this is the old thing from, uh, from one of the papers, right? Uh, yes, and uh, I just uh, added supplementary materials to the main text. Uh, Because but... in, in some other pa uh, places you have uh, modified according to the review. Yeah, yeah, I, I tried to modify, but probably there is a, a well, mistake. Yeah, cool. Okay, so Ctrl F could, could, could help. Uh, another question. Uh, so there is a chapter three. It's quite uh, short. Uh, and uh, uh, what, what is interesting is what is the main conclusion of this chapter? I mean, like you tested some methods of uh, normalization, right? Yes, uh, and uh, but then uh, what what do you recommend? I mean, the, the result of testing needs to recommend something, right? Yeah, yeah, and we re re recommend uh, using uh, that uh, normalizations like uh, la layer layer norm and weight norm. And so it's efficient in any case. There are no like uh, uh, kind of decision tree. In this case, you should use this. In this case, you should use, the, uh, use some other thing. Uh, yes. So it's, it's it's a universal recommendation, right? Uh, f yes, for in, in in that work, yes. But uh, also, a universal recommendation is not to use the batch normalization for neural audience. Well, this is a good uh, re recommendation because yeah, people like batch normalization. Okay. Um, also slide number 10 could you so there is some you know uh, applied problem on which you test the method however it's not really clear what is it could you comment a little bit any place show slides number 10 mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. What is it? Uh, it is about so neural ODEs are uh, can be applied, and the, and one of the major uh, the major problem for uh, neural ODEs is density estimation. Okay, uh, so, continue, this continue, some, uh, so, continue. so this is ah okay now I see this minimum data set so it's some toy problem right? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I see. Okay. Yeah. okay, and then do I understand correctly that, okay, uh, I understand perfectly well that uh, you propose some method for this kind of models to efficiently, uh, for efficient learning, right? Uh, right. And uh, uh, But then the question is, are there any applied examples, like uh, really re useful real-world problems where this uh, improve something uh, well uh, the, the... Uh, I mean from scientific point of view this is very good I mean you have some test problems you have the cl some class of models and for this class of models you propose something that can improve this class of uh, fitting of this class of models right right but then can this class of models with this additional uh, proposal for me for, with, with this your additional development solve some Real world problem. Uh, well, well, so, or, or the, the method itself is on par with uh, more or less standard techniques. Uh, well, uh, uh, continuous normalizing flows and uh, density estimation results uh, well, are very uh, well, complex. Uh, speaking about the, the computations, the the amount of computations, and uh, that's why it's, uh, it, it takes a lot of uh, resources to train uh, good uh, normal, continuous normalizing flows. That's why we didn't apply uh, our approaches for our approach for uh, some more interesting cases, and we just took uh, examples from the neuro ODS paper. This example is also from the neuro ODS paper, and uh, showed that. Uh, 
from from the scientific point of view, our uh, method is better than uh, the common approach. But uh, for real world uh, problems, we uh, so we, we don't have results for well, real world world problems like uh, like. Uh, image generation, like in, in diffusion models and so on? No, unfortunately not. Okay. Yeah, but uh, anyways, uh, this theme is useful, I mean, uh, in, in, in this uh, respect or in some other. Okay, so uh, that's it from my side. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, in general, I am satisfied with the uh, changes introduced to the thesis after the review. However, still there are several leaks, uh, as I mentioned. So. It would be good to change them, if possible. Um, that's it. Uh, so the next, uh, I would like to ask Professor Amplifan uh, to uh, comment on the... Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm, for, I'm sorry, I have, I have very poor connection and I lost more of the past of the presentation of, of, of Tanga. But anyway, um, uh, now I, ha I can have stable connection now. So first, I, 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 I would like to, to, to say that I, I read the, the, the thesis of, of Tangan on about two times, the, the version from the breed breed defend and the, the previous versions. And of course, there are many errors. And but then uh, finally, in, the, in this final version, Tanga have fixed more of the, uh, of the errors, improve, improve, improve the, uh, the, the, the breed thesis. And uh, uh, Tanga also addressed some of the, my command in 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 in, uh, in uh, the, the the final versions. Uh, several questions. I would be grateful if Tanga can address first in the major com command that I put in the PDF file. Uh, if it possible, so Tanga can maybe he can read this uh, and then answer some of them. So the first question I think about the. Uh, the application of, of, of the proposed uh, IRDA methods. So, Tanga, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. Yes, we can hear you very well. I'm, I'm so, okay, okay. I'm, I'm afraid that the connection is poor again. So, so okay. C can you can you go to the first command or maybe several commands? Can you can you pick up some of them and and try to address if the if you can understand the question, or maybe if my understanding of your methods is completely wrong, or maybe there's some other way to, maybe I can reformulate the question. Unfortunately, I'm connected with, uh, unfortunately, I'm connected uh, using the PC in the uh, room, not, not with no. my uh, laptop. That That is why it's problematic to, uh, Okay, 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 okay. Here, I, I can read. I can. I can open the PDF file that I I submitted. So the first question is that the the proposed the proposed methods that you uh, presented in chapter two, the interpolated uh, interpolated reverse dynamic methods. So this proposed to deal with the instability uh, of the RDM methods. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay. Then why why RDA method is not stable? Why? Because uh, the, the uh, uh, reason is that uh, the back backward uh, in time integration of uh, the system can be unstable. It's a, a common, uh, well, the, the, the common uh, fact that uh, that backwards uh, in time integration of some systems uh, can be uh, can can lead to instabilities that uh, and uh, we suppose that uh, th that was uh, the reason for uh, the RDM method for the, the reason uh, why the RDM method is not stable. Mm -hmm. and then, then why why the IRDA method is more stable? What is the in, the main ingredient make your proposed method to be more stable? Because you use less number of uh, right hand evaluation. Then in this case, uh, this even more it could be will be I think the the, the stability it could be even more severe. 
uh, it, it is more stable be uh, in my opinion because uh, the interpolation is a more smooth and stable operation than backward uh, in time differentiation uh, and that, so so that is the reason from my point of view mm -hmm. But then, okay, in chapter three, I don't, I, I haven't just clicked carefully in, chap, in chap, uh, chapter three, the, the final version. So there's one line sentence on page 34 in chapter three. It says that the OD servers require more right hand evaluation, it will be more powerful. So in this case, it is conflict with the motivation of, propose, of the proposed methods. I mean the the RDA, RDA method it, it demand it require more right hand evaluation, but then you say that okay in this case you reduce the right hand evaluation in the IIDM methods, but then in the chapter three you mentioned that the algorithm is stable or, or a bit more powerful then it require more right hand right hand side evaluation, so yeah. something. Yeah, I I, I uh, understand your question. Uh, uh, in in that phrase, uh, we meant that uh, that uh, uh, more right hand side evaluations uh, mean that we have smaller st step size. Uh, mm -hmm. and smaller step size is better for uh, numerical integration of differential equations. Um, well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's not connected to the IRDM method. It's it's connected with it's not the connected. Step method. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So so thank you. Uh, then go to the session that you apply the cross approximation of volume. So I think that you already addressed in the addressed my concerns about the v, using the VBMF. Uh, but in practice, do you use VBMF or you use the uh, volume maximization, the max volume? Uh, we used to uh, the rank. We, we we used to VBMF to estimate uh, the rank, and then use mm -hmm. this rank uh, for the maximum volume. You yeah. use VBMF to estimate the rank. The rank. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and then okay. and then I uh, used uh, this rank estimation. Uh, in our approach, so VBMF is just for uh, the rank estimation. That's uh, but that's you know that the VBMF in, indeed it computes it computes the singular value decomposition. But the idea of this method of, of the of the of the, the proposed method in chapter three of the, in chapter five to not not to compute the SVD. But if you use the VM, VBMF to compute, to just reduce the rank of the metric, then then it could be, it's, it completely, you cannot avoid the SVD now. Yes, we cannot uh, avoid computing SVD, but uh, we do it during the, uh, well, compression or acceleration step, during the acceleration step. And we don't compute the SVD on the uh, inference uh, stage. Uh, that, that's why uh, well, we have to pre-compute uh, SVDs and we do it uh, using fast randomized algorithms. Uh, but we, uh, and, and then yeah, we- Yeah, I, uh, I understand, Tanga, but, but, but when, you use, when you use VBMF, the VBMF will compute entirely the full SVD of the metric, then it means that you cannot avoid the, the SVD completely. Um, Yes, we compute we computed uh, SVD during during the compression. Yes, mm -hmm. and it, it, it takes uh, time, but uh, it can be computed. Okay. So so that's all because I I think that um, so Tanga already expressed some of my concerns. There's still some uh, some minor error in the final version, but I think that Stanga can fix this if he allowed to do this. Uh, so thank you, Stanga. Thank you for your comments. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, Professor Fan, uh, are you satisfied with the changes introduced to the thesis of yes, the yes, review? Yes. 
yeah, and amplify with the, the change in the final version. Okay, I'd like to ask uh, Professor Andrei Chikhovsky uh, for his. Okay, we can ask uh, Maxim Rahubov. I was thinking to ask uh, first uh, Andrei Chikhovsky, but okay, let's start with uh, Maxim Rahubov. Uh, huh? Okay. Uh, Maxim uh, Rahuba, Professor, uh, could you please uh, ask your uh, comments, questions? Okay, can yeah. you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, first of all, uh, regarding the chapter number five uh, with the model order reduction techniques. So, um, suppose that uh, we start from the neural ODE yeah, and apply classical uh, model order reduction techniques uh, in this case uh, and then we discretize neural order uh, uh, so neural OD uh, is it correct that we in this case will get your approach but um, in the residual connection setting so and would it in this case make more sense uh, to also compare with the uh, applying your approach to, to this setting of residual neural networks uh, okay if to if to discretize the neural ODEs uh, and uh, well, um, and view it as a discrete uh, neural net network we can apply our uh, approach from the uh, chapter 5 but uh, we didn't do it but potentially we can do it yes but are, do, do you think the formulas will be similar to what you are using in a sense? I think that yes. Yeah, but maybe just with the residual connections or, no, or not really. Yeah, probably with. Yeah, yeah, probably with the residual connections. And. Yeah, I understand. Okay, so it's probably. Uh, yeah, yes, we can we can try it for residual connections, uh, but uh, in the chapter five, uh, in in the chapter five, there was uh, introduced a way how to do it, but uh, the, there were no uh, numerical experiments for residual connections because the quality was not so good. I see, but uh, the thing that you introduce for residual connections, at least theoretically, uh, is it. Uh, like uh, equivalent to discretizing uh, ODE uh, and applying more the road, or, or, or the reduction techniques to this ODE, or is it not so clear? Uh, I would say that it is not so clear for now. Uh, okay. I, I think it's I think uh, it, uh, it's equal, but uh, uh, I'm afraid that. Uh, I, I will lie, lie to you. That's that's why I, I, I would say that it's not so clear. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, regarding the chapter four, so you, uh, uh, for for example, in chapter three, you bring ideas from the uh, like discretizing ODEs and then applying uh, discrete standard neural network techniques like normalizations. But uh, for example, in chapter four. You start with uh, like you utilize Rungikuta and so on uh, methods, and then propose techniques how to improve uh, robustness. But uh, so can they be generalized to also standard residual networks by some modifications? Or you, you didn't look in this direction? Uh, I don't think that uh, that uh, it can be generalized because uh, this uh, extra degree of freedom. Uh, that we, we, we choose uh, the solver and the number of steps uh, is uh, applicable only for uh, continuous models, but in discrete models, we're already given the discretization, and that means that we uh, uh, already have uh, the uh, step size and the solver. But yeah, but you can probably, like for this fixed step, you can perturb it slightly, or, 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 or is, I understand, misunderstood something uh, pro, pro, uh, we, we can't uh, perturb the step because uh, well 
in, in, in discrete models, uh, the, the step is already given. Like we have a single residual block mm -hmm. and uh, the, the step is uh, that's residual connection, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hope it's clear. So unfortunately, we can't apply these techniques for standard uh, deep neural networks without uh, differential equations. I see. Okay. Uh, and uh, regarding the chapter three, uh, could you comment uh, why the batch normalization is so much worse? Or do you have some intuition behind this fact or it's not, not so clear? Yeah. Yeah. The intuition is uh, uh, that uh, for uh, some uh, recurrent structures, uh, batch normalization is bad. Uh, and this, this, uh, um, behavior uh, was was also n notioned in uh, RNNs and and so on, and that uh, so uh, the, the intuition is as follows: that batch normalization is uh, n not so good for uh, for re for models with recurrent recurrent structures. Mm -hmm. I see. All right. Uh, okay, yeah, I'm done with the questions and I'm also satisfied with the corrections uh, in the current version of the thesis. Thanks a lot. Uh, so now that's it with jury members. Uh, I'd like to ask uh, uh, Supervisor uh, Ivana Siledic to say something about Talgat? Huh? Ah, so sorry, yeah, the general audience. So uh, are there any questions with the general, from a general audience? Uh, so there are no questions in the chat, right? Uh, and uh, are there any people in uh, Zoom who, who would like to ask? No. Well, then there are no questions from a general audience. Okay, so nobody would don't, don't want. Uh, um, now then, I'd like to ask one Asilidis uh, to say something about uh, some words about the uh, PhD candidate. Yeah. So everything has been said about the work. So I'd like to say about. Talgat. So Talgat is very passionate about uh, the research, what he is doing, sometimes even too passionate and I would say even humble. So he did a lot of work, published a lot of papers, but uh, he seems to be quite unhappy at some times because he always wants to do more. And this is actually one of the most important properties of the research, to be always not satisfied with what you have. However, sometimes I think you need to, uh, no, don't need to underestimate your, uh, yourself and uh, you have actually seen it many times. So basically everyone uh, understands that the work that you are doing is, is great. So you are uh, well independent researcher and uh, I'm pretty sure that there will be a lot of nice results further on. So what, what else you have to do? In the morning I was counting how many PhD students have defended. So even in this room there are three. Uh, so you are number 14 already. So yeah, so and we form a big group of people with diplomas who will be doing again great things later on for the benefit of uh, the, the mankind if it's a correct word nowadays. But anyway, of course, uh, Talgat uh, is extremely talented and very productive. And uh, yeah, I'm extremely happy with his performance. Okay, thank you very much. And now we should have a closed deliberation, Zoom breakout room. Yes, okay, uh, we ask, yes, everyone knows already here in, in the audience to leave the room. You may enjoy your coffee and tea. Okay, so uh, I would like to announce the final decision. Uh, by majority vote, uh, we uh, 
accepted the thesis to pass as is. So let's congratulate Talgat. Uh, I guess we can, guys, please uh, stay uh, uh, in, uh, in Zoom. Uh, Talgat, uh, so uh, if you have any final words, so please tell us some brief comments. Oh, uh, and so we, we will make a photo of you. Okay. So I, I just want uh, to say thank you to uh, to many people, uh, to uh, reviewers, to colleagues, and of course to my uh, scientific advisors. Uh, and uh, it was uh, an inter interesting period of my life, and I hope that I will keep uh, uh, connections with all those uh, uh, people who, with whom I worked during this this gradient school. Uh, thanks a lot. Okay.